Formula 1 is back this weekend at the all-time classic track of Suzuka for the 2019 Japanese Grand Prix. A Grand Prix this weekend that judging by the weather conditions is probably going to be a chaotic weekend. And we could even see a championship being decided this weekend at a track that historically championships do get decided at. But join me in this video to preview this weekend's Japanese Grand Prix and look at whether that can happen with the Constructors World Championship and preview with me what is going to happen this weekend in Japan. But before we get into previewing the teams, let's first do a recap of the 2018 race, where that weekend Mercedes took another step towards the Drivers' and Constructors' World titles with another one to finish. Red Bull will be hoping for a similar result this weekend than they got to last year's 2018 race where they got P3 and P4, with Daniel Ricciardo coming from near the back of the grid and almost getting on the podium. Last year though, this was yet another race where Ferrari completely threw away points and continued to bottle the championship. At least they can't do that this weekend. And we even got to see some disgraceful driving from Kevin Magnussen in the Haas on the Sauber of Charles Leclerc at the time. But last year's race was definitely a good, exciting race and the weekend was very exciting as well. And given how competitive the field is, especially at the top of the grid, we are going to have, I think, a very, very competitive weekend. Because this track really does showcase who the best drivers are in Formula 1. It really is a driver's circuit. Only the greats win at Suzuka. And if you want to be great, you've got to showcase your skills at this type of track. But now let's get into previewing the top teams and how I think they are going to do this weekend. First off for Mercedes, they can win another Constructors World title this weekend if they get a 1-2 finish, which is exactly what they got in 2018. But them getting that is going to be quite difficult because Ferrari in the dry are going to be very competitive and I think Red Bull will be much more competitive in Suzuka than they were in Russia. So I'm not quite sure Mercedes will get the constructors wrapped up in Japan, but you never know if it does rain, given how good that car is in the wet conditions, it is still possible. And I don't think we can absolutely count them out in dry conditions because let's remember that this team has dominated this race since the V6 hybrid era began. And also they have new upgrades for this race as well so they might be a bit better in the dry than expected. But again winning the race is going to be pretty tough and they do have a big fight on their hands to get it. And even though Ferrari are the favourites I think to win this Grand Prix this weekend... I think also they do have a big fight on their hands to actually get the win. Because we're not quite sure what the weather's going to do for qualifying and the race. And as we know in the wet, Ferrari are not that great. And a weird and wacky weekend might just throw Ferrari off the boil at a track where they really should win the Grand Prix. Because in the dry, the way the track is, considering how fast it is, as we know the Ferrari car is very good at high speed tracks. They really should dominate the Grand Prix weekend. But again, given the weather, that puts a doubt on that. But as long as there's no controversies between the two drivers, I think Ferrari will be fine. One team though to watch out for this weekend, a team that I think will be a lot better than people expect, is Red Bull. And of course, this is a very important race for Red Bull because of course their engine supplier Honda, this is their home race. And they of course are going to absolutely go for it this weekend to try and please the home crowd. And I think they can because I think dry or wet Red Bull do have a good car for this type of track. Max Verstappen also is very good at Suzuka. And I think because of the support that Red Bull and Honda are going to get this weekend, I think that will spur them on to going for the race win and they might even get it. The lookout for Max Verstappen and Red Bull, they are a big dark horse this weekend. But before we go into the midfield, let's now look at the driver's standing. So Lewis Hamilton is P1. Lewis Hamilton can't win the driver's title this weekend, but he can take a big step towards that. Valtteri Bottas is still clearly P2, Leclerc is P3, Verstappen P4 and Vettel is P5. And then we still have a great battle going on between Gasly, Sainz, Albon for P6 in the Drivers' Championship and Norris and Ricciardo very close at the back end of that top 10. 
But as ever in 2019, the midfield is going to be very tight. And at this track, considering how much of a driver's track it is and considering how tight the midfield is when it comes to the pace of the respective cars, I think really this weekend in terms of who does well, it really is going to come down to the drivers. The cars, though, are still going to play their part. And first off for Renault, I think the Renault car will go better here than it did in Singapore and Russia. Because as we saw at Monza, a high-speed track, Renault were very competitive. And if you look at the high-speed tracks in 2019 that Renault have raced at, they've been a bit better than they normally have. And Suzuka is exactly that. And both drivers have gone well here before. And also, Renault are going to be debuting and trialling a new front wing design. So look out for Renault because they might do even better than even I'm expecting. And I think Renault are going to be at the front of the midfield this weekend. For McLaren, they'll be fine. Their car will be in the top 10. I'm not quite sure they'll be on the fourth row of the grid. But they're going to be in the top 10 for sure because both drivers are driving very well. And the car is very good. I don't think it will be as good as the Renault around a track like this. But it is going to be still close. And no matter if it's wet or dry, do keep an eye out for Carlos Sainz because Carlos historically does go well here. Considering that I think Alfa Romeo's 2019 is basically over because they have too much ground to make up to climb the constructors, this weekend simply they have to go for it. Because the last four or five races has just results wise considering the pace of the car at their respective weekends has just not quite been as expected. And if we do get some weird weather, if they go for it and see what happens, who knows, they might get a great result. For Haas F1, normally Haas do go well here. And I think in qualifying, if qualifying is dry, that Haas will be good. In the race, I'm not quite sure. But hopefully for Haas F1, they can continue the better form they've been in. Because you cannot doubt that Haas F1 are now starting to get on top of the issues that their car had earlier on in the season. It's also kind of an important race for Toro Rosso for two reasons. One, because of course their engine supplier Honda, it's their home race, but also because Toro Rosso are still close enough to Renault to catch Renault and get P5 in the constructors. And if they can pick their form up and really go after Renault for the final five races, there's no reason why Toro Rosso can't get P5. So this is a big race for Toro Rosso and I think Toro Rosso this weekend will go a lot better than they did in Russia because I think this type of track does suit their car better and I think both drivers will go better here anyway. And pretty much the same goes for Racing Point. I think Racing Point will be a bit stronger this weekend than they were in Russia and I think they are in probably for a points finish with one car. It probably won't be a great amount of points but it's going to be something. And it needs to be something if Racing Point are going to continue to climb the Constructors' table before 2019 is out. And talking of the Constructors' table, let's now look at it. So Mercedes are way ahead of Ferrari, who are P2. Mercedes, again, they can claim the Constructors' title with a 1-2 finish this weekend. But again, that might be a bit difficult. Ferrari is P2 and Red Bull is P3. McLaren are absolutely going to finish P4 on the Constructors now as they're way ahead of Renault. Renault are P5, Toro Rosso P6, only 13 points behind Renault. And then Racing Point are 3 points back from Toro Rosso. Alpha are P8 and you can see when it comes to the points differential between Renault and Alpha, the Alpha don't really have an opportunity to go for P5 in the Constructors anymore. Pass are P9, hopefully they can continue to score Points, not big points, but something. And of course, Williams are at the back. But before we get into the rest of the video, there's one thing I really want to look at, and that is what makes Suzuka so great, but also so tough for the drivers. But what we're going to do is do a track guide using the F1 game. And yes, this is me driving the Red Bull car. If you want to comment on my driving skills, then go ahead and do so. But this is just a track guide. As we now head down into turn one and turn one is a very unique corner for how quick it is and also for how it has to be drove because it's one of those corners where you've got to be absolutely super committed and every time you go into turn one you always feel as though 
You can be more committed than you were the time before and you've got to just absolutely throw it in and hope the car does stick. And I'd say it's much more important for the drivers this corner than it is for the cars because for the cars, considering how great aerodynamically they are the cars, it's not that tough of a corner, but for the drivers, if you're going to get the most speed out of your car and out of yourself, you've got to be really committed. And then we come to the S's where again, you've got to be super committed. But what makes this part of the track so difficult is, again, you've got to have that commitment in throwing the car into the corners, but you've got to be so precise in how you place your car. Because if you get offline just slightly and touch one of the curbs a bit too much for the car's liking, you'll be in the barriers. And that is what makes this part of the track so difficult and so great because you are always on the absolute edge of grip and on the edge of going off the track. And then we come into Degna 1 and Degna 2. Now Degna 1 is probably the corner you've got to be the most committed in because it's one of those corners where you've literally just got to throw it into the corner and hope that the car sticks. And if it does, then instantly you've got to start braking and downshifting for Degna 2, which is a very difficult corner because you're coming down off a bit of a downslopey hill. And also, if you don't get Degna 1 right, you're probably going to crash on the exit of Degna 2. And the reason we see so many crashes in Degna 2 is because so many drivers will get Degna 1 wrong and then it puts the car off balance going into the second Degna. But then once you exit that part of the track, you then come into the hairpin. Now, what makes this hairpin quite good, in my opinion, is it's not a corner where you have to take a certain line. Some drivers like to absolutely hug the inside of the curb and really get the nose in very tight. Some drivers take a wider turn in to get the best exit. And then after the hairpin, it is time for the spoon corners. Again, very difficult corners. But again, in a very similar way to the S's section, you've got to be very precise in where you place your car, but also committed. Because if you clip the inside curve of the first part of Spoon a bit too hard, you'll go off the track. Or if you go too wide, you'll be off the track. But the most important part of this part of the track is getting the first part right. Because if you get that right, then the second part will be fine. And then once you've exited Spoon, you then take the run down to 130R, a corner that used to be difficult before 2003, where they turned it into basically a kink on a straight before 2003. It really was a proper corner. But now it's just an easy left-hander flat-out corner. And then you come to the final chicane where you've got to be so incredibly late on the brakes, but also you've got to hit the apexes at the chicane because if you don't, then you're going to get a very poor exit going onto the pit straight. And also very critical not to spin up your wheels on the exit of the final chicane going onto the pit straight, and that is a lap in the dry. Now, considering that we may have some wet weather this weekend, we do have to talk about Suzuka also in the wet. Now, the track guide I just did for Suzuka in the dry, I think I illustrated there how difficult Suzuka is in normal conditions. But in the wet, this track can be near impossible to drive, not just because of how the corners are, but it's because of how narrow the track is. Because you have to remember that Suzuka is one of those classic race tracks where we don't have really any tarmac runoff. So if you go slightly off the track at Suzuka, you're basically in the gravel or in the barriers. And it's not one of those very wide open racetracks like Bahrain where you can comfortably move around the track. You've got to stay really on one line through the corners. And if you get off that line, then you're in a very difficult position. But if it does rain, expect many drivers to be off the track because again, driving Suzuka in the wet is near impossible. And it really will show the men from the boys. But there's your track guide of Suzuka. But now let's get into finally, what do I think will happen this weekend? Well, first off, I don't think qualifying will take place when it's supposed to on Saturday. Because if you didn't know, we have a typhoon heading for Suzuka on Saturday and for the weekend. And I just don't think qualifying will go ahead. So what I think will happen is qualifying will go ahead on Sunday morning Suzuka time and then the race of course will go ahead a few hours later in the afternoon, again Suzuka time. 
and most likely both sessions will be held in the dry but because the track will be green and the grip won't be known to the drivers and the running order will not be quite the same with a green track this is what i'm going to go for so in qualifying i'm going for charles leclerc on pole position lewis hamilton will be second with max verstappen in third but then in the race i'm going to go for max verstappen to win Charles Leclerc second and Lewis Hamilton third. Now you may think that I am crazy for going with that prediction. But again considering the weather we're possibly going to have this weekend. And how again if we do get dry running after the typhoon. It's really going to upset the running order. I don't think this prediction is actually that crazy. And again as I said earlier Max Verstappen historically is very very good at this track. And so are Red Bull, so I think Max Verstappen will take victory. But guys, that is my preview of this weekend's 2019 Japanese Grand Prix. Let me know though in the comments section down below, what do you think will happen this weekend? And also guys, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button for more content like this. And just to let you guys know, I will be live on Friday at 5.30 a.m. UK time for practice two for the 2019 Japanese Grand Prix. So until then, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.